The Valley of Kings has brought forth amazing treasure, both archaeological and gold-related, from its over 60 tombs in Theban necropolis. Recently, deep within the ancient, dusty tunnels, a team of archaeologists from Switzerland discovered a new tomb that stands apart from all others. Instead of a king or a queen, the tomb was occupied by a female singer named Neves Bassett. Today on History Bazaar, we're exploring the secret about the most significant discovery of the past century. This is the first time a tomb has been discovered containing a woman that wasn't in some way related to royalty. On January 25, 2011, a team of archaeologists led by Suzanne Bickel of the University of Basel in Switzerland was quietly making one of the most significant discoveries of the past century. They had initially found the top of a large round stone at the eastern end of the Valley of the Kings. The valley lies on the west bank of the Nile, opposite what was once Egypt's spiritual center, the city of Thebes, now known as Luxor. The archaeologists suspected that it was the top of an abandoned shaft, but before they could investigate, due to Egypt's political process regarding finds within the valley, they had to cover the stone rim with their own locked iron door, inform the Egyptian authorities, and apply for an official permit to excavate. A year later, after gaining approval to excavate, Bikel returned with a team of two dozen people, including field director Alina Paulin Gott of the University of Basel, Egyptian inspector Ali Reda, and local workmen. They started clearing the sand and gravel out of the shaft. Eight feet down, they came upon the upper edge of a door blocked by large stones. At the bottom of the shaft, they found fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster, a material commonly used to seal tomb entrances. Those plaster pieces, together with the age of other nearby sites, were the first sign that the shaft might actually be a tomb dating to between 1539 and 1292 BC, Egypt's 18th dynasty. Although stones blocked the entrance, there was a hole just large enough to admit a small digital camera. From this small hole, they were able to snap pictures. The surprising images revealed a small rock-cut chamber measuring 13 by 8.5 feet, filled to within three feet of the ceiling with debris, leaving little doubt they had found a tomb. Mikkel had stated that she had never seen an Egyptian coffin in such a good condition before. The dating of fragments of pottery made from Nile silt and pieces of plaster commonly used to seal tomb entrances in ancient times together with the age of other nearby sites have indicated that the tomb could be more than 3,000 years old. The hieroglyphs describe the tomb's occupant as being named Nimes Bassett. Egyptologists currently believe she was a daughter of the high priest of Amun. The coffin's color and hieroglyphics match a style that dates to between 945 and 715 BC, at least 350 years after the tomb was built. The coffin shows that the burial chamber had been reused, a common practice at the time. People have been claiming there was nothing new left to find in the Valley of the Kings for almost as long as they have been digging there. The Venetian antiquarian Giovanni Belzoni believed that he had emptied the last of the valley's tombs during his 1817 expedition. While Theodore Davis, who excavated there a century later, came to a similar conclusion right before Tutankhamun's burial chamber was found. Before Bikel's team could take Neems Bassett's coffin out of the burial chamber for further study, they had to open it to make sure that nothing inside would be damaged when it was moved. It took a professional restorer a day to remove the nails that held the lid closed. Inside, they found a carefully wrapped female mummy, about five feet tall. It was blackened all over and stuck to the bottom of the coffin by a sticky fruit-based syrup used in the mummification process. Even in the short time since its discovery, the tomb is already providing intriguing insights into the life of the woman who was buried there. The time of Nimes Bassett's burial was long after Egypt had reached the peak of its power and influence. 
The Great Pyramid was more than 1,500 years old, and the prosperous days of the New Kingdom were gone. Fortunately, there is a growing number of people who are beginning to suspect that there is a wealth of discovery still left to be made in the Valley of the Kings. Thanks to discoveries such as these, interest in these existing mysteries grows by the day. It is interesting to see that in this period, even a wealthy girl was buried with quite simple things, Bickel says, comparing Neems Bassett's coffin and steel with the elaborate pottery furniture and food found in earlier tombs. Her wooden coffin was certainly quite expensive, she says, but nonetheless, it lacked the elaborate inner coffins found in similar burials. Is this the burial chamber of an extremely ancient queen? As a chantress or singer in the temple of Amon, she probably lived in the 250-acre Karnak temple complex located in Thebes. Her name, translated as May Bassett Save Her, indicates that she was found under the protection of the feline goddess and divine mother Bassett, the protector of Lower Egypt. Neem's Bassett's occupation, however, was to worship Amon, the king of ancient Egyptian gods. Neem's Bassett was one of the many priestess musicians who performed inside the sanctuaries and in the courts of the temples. For years, people have debated what kind of music it was, says Teeter. But there's no musical notation left. We're not sure how they tuned the instruments or whether they sang or chanted. Some scholars have suggested it may have sounded like an ancient ancestor of rap, she adds. The emphasis was definitely on percussion. Images often show people stamping their feet and clapping. Examples of song lyrics are recorded on temple walls. This one from Luxor refers to the festival of Apet, when the cult images of the gods Amun, Mut, and Khonsu were brought by boat down the Nile to renew the pharaoh's divine essence. To learn more about Neem's Bassett, Mikkel's team needed to move the mummy to their lab. After reinforcing the coffin and securing the mummy, Mikkel's team have transported the mummy across the Nile to Luxor, where a full investigation is being currently undertaken into the true identity of the mystery female. The team has emptied and sealed the coffin, but plans to return to complete an architectural analysis so they can learn more about its construction. Bikel hopes to find the name or at least the title of the tomb's original 18th dynasty occupant. With substantial insight into the controversial finds within ancient Egypt, we personally suspect that often the tombs which appear the most crudely designed containing wooden sarcophages are generally found to be the most ancient. Furthermore, their hieroglyphic writings were often far more exquisite in nature. Could this be the discovery of an original burial and crude hieroglyphic claim of the occupant's identity a fake, hiding the Delta's true antiquity? A sacred many fringe scientists have begun to believe it is being protected by Egyptian antiquities. Many have come to suspect the Egyptians merely copied the original builders of the pyramids after taking occupation of their structures many years later. Supportive evidence for these claims comes in many forms. Erosion upon the pyramids, and especially the Sphinx, including over 100 underground chambers we are currently researching discovered under Giza. In 1995, a team led by Kent Weeks also shows strong evidence of several flash flooding events involving seawater throughout their long existence. The lack of any written detail pertaining to the construction of either monument in any hieroglyphics found in ancient Egypt and so on. We find it incredibly intriguing that more was not made public regarding this amazing find, which leads us to suspect it may be a highly important, albeit highly controversial, discovery. We will continue to do research on Neem's Bassett and will endeavor to keep you all informed regarding any notable findings. Thanks for watching History Bazaar. Please make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more videos like this one.